It doesn't matter how many followers you got on social media as a band, or as a musician, or as a DJ, or how much cash you got in your pocket, their platform is there for you to go on, utilise it, and express yourself. What seems to have changed now is, is a venue will close, uh, but it won't come back. I don't think we've ever really sort of made a profit more than a couple of years in a row. It's always been a very tight wire that we've walked. In January, people took to the streets of Cardiff to save Guildford Crescent, a row of historic terraces, home to grassroots music venue Goody Hill. The venue recently celebrated its 10th birthday, but is now facing closure and demolition. Daniel Minty is leading the campaign to save Goody Hoo and Guildford Crescent as he believes it's an integral part of the city's culture. Goody Hoo to me, I've often referred to it as the United Nations of Cardiff because you can go in there on any given night of the week and see something completely different. You can go in on a Monday night, there'll be a quiz on. You go in there on a Tuesday night, there'll be spoken word. A Wednesday night, you'll have Afro fun, Thursday, jazz. Friday, indie rock, Saturday, metal, Sunday, house and hip-hop. It's all going on there. It's one of the best venues in the city for literally not discriminating. Goody Who is under threat of demolition as the landlord has plans to sell the land to developers. Cardiff will lose another historic part of the city and another grassroots music venue. People in this city and other cities across the UK need these spaces in order to hone their craft and cut their teeth. Thousands attended the march, proving this small music venue means so much to so many. Davy Newington is the lead singer of Boy Azuga. Last year, the band won the Welsh Music Prize, but that wouldn't have been possible without venues like Goody Who. It genuinely is like just one of my favourite places. I absolutely love it here. I mean, it just seems really... Um, I think it would just be really sad if it went. Hands together, Goody Who. Just, just, just have a space where you can come and just experiment and maybe you'll fail. Like I played here and I played like a few Boy Azuga songs when I was about like 17 or 18 here and it was such a bad gig. But it was like having the, having the chance to come and like actually try stuff out and then yeah like cut your teeth as they say, it's just like really important. And then we played here last year and it was like genuinely one of the best gigs I've ever done and it was just lush. Long live Guildford Crescent. Grassroots music venues are a vital part of UK music culture. They're dedicated to supporting local and upcoming musicians and are a place for people to socialise and immerse themselves into a city's music scene. According to UK Music, an estimated 35% of grassroots music venues closed between 2007 and 2015. This year alone, a number of venues have closed. The Harley in Sheffield shut without warning due to financial pressures, leaving locals in dismay. And despite over 2,000 people donating to the Cellar Forever campaign, the Cellar in Oxford closed its doors for the final time and is standing empty. In Nottingham, the maze recently announced it will be closing. From the public eye, there's always a bit of a misconception of what venues, how well they're doing in a lot of ways, especially small venues, you know, that if people just come here on those busy nights when there's bigger acts playing or Saturdays, Friday nights when it's always generally quite busy, they always think the venue must be doing well. Whereas in reality, actually, I don't think we've ever really sort of made a profit more than a couple of years in a row. It's always been a very tight wire that we've walked. So... Um, it's always there's always on and off over the 15 years been the old conversation in a bad when we've had a bad summer maybe or a bad run of you know can we keep doing this but then I think um, last summer we had a, quite a bad summer we've, it was obviously very warm last summer and that affected our trade a lot not many people want to be in a venue watching music when they can go out to festivals and stuff and then over the last six months it's slowly come to a point where we just were like yeah we've got to a point now where we're struggling to do it on a personal level uh, financially it's still the same struggle it's always been if not actually probably a bit worse than it used to be and harder there's a lot more to manage um, and so we finally came to that decision short of January February this year and obviously released a statement in late March that we would be leaving. The maze will continue to open until the summer but its future after that point is uncertain. In Cambridge, venues are doing what they can to support local live music. The Blue Moon hires its venue out for free. I grew up in Cambridge, so seeing loads of music venues shut down has been really sad because 
you know, people can't go to gigs. It's really hard for musicians to get shows. So it's really important that we have a platform and a space for upcoming musicians to come and play at and share their music with everyone. Although we don't have the budget to pay artists, we let them put on their own shows um, with no fee. They take all the money from the door. We're just happy with bar sales and to hear their music. Musician Tom Lumley has been playing the city's venues since the age of 18. Four years on, his headline show at grassroots music venue, the Portland Arms, was a sellout. For us as a band to be able to step on here and, and play sold out shows in a venue that we've grown up wanting to play, it's so special and we need, we need those venues. We did loads of shows here supporting bands, building up the fan base and now that we've got that it it led us to being able to do our own headline shows, which has led us to gaining more sort of notice, I suppose, from the industry, um, from people further afield, which has helped us with touring. And as soon as you can sort of say, well, we're from Cambridge, but we're, we're selling out shows that are like Port and Arms or, or stuff like that, and more promoters want to take interest and they want to be able to give you a platform at other cities around the country as well as playing here, which that stems out to grassroots venues again, because we're now going on tours around the UK playing grassroots venues in all the different cities. Crossing to Cambridge Junction, a venue that showcases local and upcoming musicians every month. The venue's popular culture manager has seen a change in the workings of grassroots music venues. Venues have always closed. Uh, as long as I've been going to gigs, venues have closed. But what seems to have changed now is, is a venue will close, uh, but it won't come back. Whereas in the past, the people who ran that venue might open a venue somewhere else, or the building that the venue was in might reopen as a venue with someone else running it. But it seems to me now that the venue closes and, and it doesn't come back, it doesn't come back at somewhere else, or that building doesn't get used for a venue anymore. It becomes a phone shop or it gets turned into luxury apartments, or the apartments that they build next to it make it close because it's too loud. If a venue is in a building, that building should stay as a venue forever. <laughs> 170 miles north of Cambridge, Manchester, the heart of UK music culture. Two years ago, nightclub Sankeys and grassroots music venue Sound Control closed. The music shop turned music venue has been demolished and will be replaced with student flats. Regulars still have fond memories of Sound Control. Best memory was New Year's Eve, the last New Year's Eve that they threw there because they knew it was closing but it wasn't like public knowledge. So they just kind of threw a massive party for everyone. So we were queuing up outside and just opened the door and let all of my mates in, all of us just in. Just like, just had a nice community feel to it. Like, everyone who worked there cared. Sam also remembers the feeling when he found out the venue was closing. I was angry. Like, for Manchester, obviously what happened with Sankey's and then the same's happened to here. And it's just for, like, flats. It's not for anything meaningful. But it's not all doom and gloom, as Manchester seems to be bucking the trend. Sound Troll's closed, and then there's been gyms that has opened. Yes, I've opened two floors. 33 Oldham Road's opened, and Rebellion, which was a small club towards the Hilton, towards Deansgate, has gone from doing a couple of shows to being busy now five, six days a week. Um, so I'll say one place has gone. A minimum five places have exploded at the right cap. So what does the future hold for grassroots music venues across the UK? Well, at this year's Great Escape Festival, Arts Council England announced it will be working with the Music Venue Trust to invest £1.5 million into grassroots venues by March 2020. And one thing you can do is pay to see and listen to live music at your local venue. Supporting your scene keeps music alive. If you care about music and you care about creativity like just just go to gigs and support your local venues because it um yeah they can't exist without you really